In the first tutorial, we will briefly introduce Cool's user interface, some terminologies, and basic quake map editing concepts that we'll be using. We will also show you the steps to set up some textures in Cool, which is required before we can start making our first quake map. This is the screen that we will see when we first start up Cool. Whenever we want to work on a new map, we need to create a new document. We do so by going to the File menu and selecting New. This will pop up a couple of windows on the screen. Here we have the four main editing windows, and each one will display the map that we're building from four different viewing directions. To demonstrate this, we will add a Quake player in our new map. First we click the right mouse button inside the window, go to Add Entity, then down to Player, and select Start. A wireframe model of a Quake player then appears in our map. This window here shows the Quake player from its top side. This window shows the Quake player from his back side. This window shows the Quake player from his right side. And this window shows the Quake player from a 3D angle. Quake uses a right-handed 3D coordinate system in its maps. The best way to understand this system is to think of a normal road map that we see every day. The positive x-axis is similar to the direction east and will always be pointing to the right side in the top view window. The positive y-axis is like the direction north and will always be pointing up in the top view window. Now simply think of the z-axis as a measurement of height values in our quake maps. In this case, the positive z-axis will be coming out of the top view window and will be pointing towards us. There are two primary components in a quake map. We call the first component brushes and the second component entities. A brush is simply a three-dimensional solid block. In a quake map, the world is made out of solid blocks. To make a simple cubic room, we would need six brushes to enclose off an empty area. One brush for the ceiling, one brush for the floor, and four brushes for the surrounding walls. We have provided many pre-made brushes of different shapes and geometry from within Cool. To add these brushes into our quake maps, we click the right mouse button in any of the editing windows, go to Add Brush, and select a brush from the different menus. The brush will then be placed in our map and appear in our four editing windows. As for the second component to a quake map, there are two kinds of entities, item entities and applied entities. The item entities are basic items in Quake such as weapons, health boxes, and monsters. To add an item entity to our map, we right click, go to add entity, and simply select an item from the different menus. We have demonstrated this previously with our Quake player example. The applied entities are special properties that we assign to some brushes to make them perform certain functions, like an elevator that moves up or down, or a door that opens and closes. We will show you how to use these applied entities later on in the tutorial. Now before we can start making our first map, we need to import and set up some textures that we can use to put on the walls, floors, and ceilings in our quake maps. To do this, we go to the texture menu and select the add wad command. This will bring up a dialog box that expects us to select a texture file. I simply select a texture file on my hard drive that's named quake101.wad. The program will then import the textures from the file into its own database. When this is done, we can see all the new textures in this window. We can even maximize the texture window and scroll through all the new textures. And when we're done looking, we can restore the texture window back to its original size. Now that we set up the textures in Cool, we are ready to make our first Quake map.